drive, gets inside, leans in, knocked away, it's stolen by Holiday. Now up for the layup, oh, blocked by James! To Curry, way down to bang, bang! It's the tagger! Here's the problem I'm seeing. Zion's gonna want out soon. Here's the thing, I don't think the front office of that organization, of that New Orleans organization, knows what the heck they're doing. What can I say? Mamba out. Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Josh Phoenix, and today is day four of ten of our journey to the NBA trade deadline, our countdown to the NBA trade deadline. And this is really like day 4 of 12, because you think about it, when the trade deadline stops on the 9th, uh, February 9th, that's a Thursday. So I'm done with that, or my normal podcast schedule will go back to effect. But that'll be Friday and Saturday, so you guys get extra content on top of all of that content. So it's very exciting. But this is day 4 of 10 of just tracking the NBA trade deadline of just counting down the days and seeing what progression teams have made on if they're a buyer or seller, if they're staying in path or just just their neutral right. Um what big rumors are coming up, what big players, uh draft picks, reports, all that stuff. And like I've been saying since Monday, yeah, Monday, uh like since the trade line is coming up, I will be releasing a podcast episode detailing the trade line each day leading up to the ninth. And happy February to you guys. Um, I did not say that yesterday, but it's Thursday, February 2nd. I can't confirm that. Thank you. Um, today's February 2nd. If I've not said uh, happy February, it is kicking off the month very strong. I'm loving it. We got a trade line coming up, and we got the All Star break coming up with so much uh, epic content. I'm going to be expressing that down the road, so we have that going on. But yeah, we're kicking off February right, and I got some good, good topics for today. Breaking news around the league. Uh, no topic of the day, but I highly encourage everyone to be checking out the latest podcast episodes I'm putting out. Why? Because it goes through Jeremy Grant, it goes through OJ Anobi trade packages, new rumors that are coming out, um, the Raptors being forced into massive rebuild, but is that as bad as it sounds? Just going through some of that, uh, and just a lot of good content, a lot of good content. So if you guys have been missing some of the trade deadline rumors, reports, injuries that are coming up, big stuff, big or small stuff, go check that out. It's still relevant to today, to Thursday. So do not miss it, guys. And with that being said, let's jump into some of the other important stuff. Before we jump into today's podcast episode, of breaking news around the league, and we got some banger of content here. Real quick, you know where to find me on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, for the six people that still use it. Sorry if you're one to six, but it's truth. Uh, Quartz Heat, uh, Twitter.com slash Quartz Heat, Instagram.com slash Quartz Heat NBA, Facebook.com slash Quartz Heat, and Tumblr.com slash court side heat um if you guys want to be generous today and you don't have to this is just a just suggestion uh, go to patreon.com slash court side heat help support us that will be an amazing i'm not asking for anything huge free dollars a one-time donation of free dollars i'm not asking for much because i'm not expecting i'm just wanting to get higher level of content out there because I want to do this for you guys and also for myself who's a fan of the game. So as a fan of the game, I want to give that opportunity of knowing everything about the game to other fans. Especially all my stuff that's going on, on YouTube from gaming to NBA clips to the podcast to courtsy.com, my website. So if you guys would take two minutes, two five minutes out of your day, I would highly appreciate it. If not, that's cool. Keep coming on for the ride of the trade line. Happy to have y'all as 
I just want to, for us to all witness the NBA trade on in its full glory because I know there's going to be some epic, epic trades going down. I don't know if it's going to involve the entire Raptors um, locker room. I don't know if it's going to involve Bone Highlands. Even I'm pretty sure about that. Jacob Plow. We got a lot of names. We got a lot of names that we have to put faces to. And we have a lot of rumors that we have to put some credit or discredit to it. Discredit? I think it's a word. Yeah. So, with that being said, guys, let's jump into today's podcast episode, breaking news around the league, and let's get it started now. Okay, I want to come out the gates strong, and I want to talk about the Atlanta Hawks. Before I get to the league, uh, before I get to the Suns news and the Lakers news, and some very interesting uh, Cam Reddish news. And the news I'm about to tell you, the reports, and Ian, ba- Ian Bagley came out of this. So, um, this is, this, this is 100% factual. Um, the stuff said about Cam Reddish in that report was very interesting, but it'll make you really, really, really consider how petty the Knicks really are. Really, Tom Thibodeau. We already know their owner. He's the most pettiest man alive. I honestly believe that. But now Tom Thibodeau is getting up there. But I'm going to get to that in a quick second after I'm done talking about the Atlanta Hawks and John Collins. We've been talking about John Collins for the past few months. I've been breaking him down on CourtsHeat.com and on the podcast and even on YouTube just in certain instances, right? So I find that very, very interesting. And now, I find it really interesting to this. The Atlanta Hawks have significantly decreased, yes, you heard that correctly, decreased their trade, their, um, their asking price on a trade of John Collins. They dropped their mandate for a first round pick and are instead focused on uh, landing a quality player or players in return for Collins. So. We're going to have shifts now. When the recent report came out that the Hawks were going to be patient, that they were going to be fine, just sit on for the remainder of the season, may be out the window. I'm not going to lie, it may be out the window. Because if you have that shift just in a day of just news, so if you take the news day by day, that is a large shift. I am not going to lie. Because you go from standing firm, hearing those offers, not moving from your moving from your post, but now you're like, oh, okay, we'll we'll decrease our trade demands. We'll decrease his value as we see it. So I find that very very interesting. Why? Because this is going to happen two ways. So this is there's going to be two outcomes. More teams are going to flood in for John Collins because he's going to be cheaper and they're only going to have to exchange players and maybe a second round pick. No first, they drop that in mandate. They just want to give up a quality player. And secondly, the Hawks are ready to move off of John Collins. They're done with him. Because how I'm interpreting it and how reports have been interpreting it is that the Hawks are trying to salvage this season. With the record that they currently have and the position that they're currently in, they're just trying to get some young players, just trying to get players around or quality players that they can use here, right here, right now. Not to win it all, but just to keep themselves afloat and hopefully make a playoff push. But the Hawks, um, I know they beat the Suns by 32 yesterday night. I did not get a chance to watch that game, but I'm happy I didn't. They're currently 26 and 26 and 8th in the Eastern Conference. Look. They're going to have to make some big new, big moves because they're just inconsistent. I get they're 6 and 4 in the last 10. I get it where the Hawks are in the East, but the East is a lot tougher. And when you're surround yourself with these stats and the likes of the Wizards and Pacers and potentially even the Bulls, it's like, it's tough. And those are like 9th, 10th, 11th seeded teams. So the Hawks, what they're trying to do is like, like, look, we'll drop our price. 
we'll decrease it, but we want a quality player or players. One quality player, one decent player. We'll take it, maybe a second round pick, but that's probably pushing it. Not going to lie, depending on the player, right, or players. So, they're just trying to sell it to season. They're trying to make a push. They want to be better than the Heat. They want to be better than the Knicks. They want to be better than the Wizards, Pacers, Bulls, Raptors, Magic, Hornets, Pistons. They want to be better than a lot of those teams. And that is respectable. There is nothing wrong with what they have said. Or what they're publicly admitting through these reports of decreasing the value, the trade value, their asking price on a trade for John of John Collins. So I find that very, very important to highlight, to detail, and to understand. And tomorrow I will be having fresh, brand new, up-to-date mock trades for John Collins and teams that are interested in John Collins. And I'll have a full list of teams that are ready to have more interest and to negotiate with the Hawks come tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Remember, the podcast comes out every morning, 8 in the morning. It does not matter what's happening, 8 a.m. as always. So check that out on YouTube and all of the other podcast hosting platforms. So that is the news surrounding the Atlanta Hawks and the only news surrounding the Atlanta Hawks. Now, we're going to go to a different direction, a different place. And the only team to have a piece of news in today's podcast episode would be the New York Knicks. I find this very interesting. So, it's being reported by Ian Bagley, this came out yesterday, that earlier in the season, Cam Reddish expressed his pleasure to an assistant coach about the way Tom Thibodeau was using him. Guess what? Reddish has not played since. He is going to be traded. That could be one of the easiest trades. I know the I know the Lakers want him. I know many of our teams are going to be... Look. No matter the team, Cam Reddish's own camp expects the wing to be dealt before the deadline. Look. I find that very interesting. That a guy who complains about his role leads him to the bench and not being able to play. I find that very interesting. This is a guy that's going from playing 20, 22 minutes per game and 20 games to zero points since making that remark. So he's not even played 20 games. He He's missed 50% of the season so far. And I find that very, very astonishing, to say the least. And Cam Reddish productivity has gone down since coming to the Knicks. And the Knicks have too many players and not enough minutes. And it's been affecting Cam Reddish. Because you we're going to see that problem of Obi Toppin as well. But since they're not playing Cam Reddish and a bunch of other guys, they're fine. But let's just keep... Uh, Fixing our eyes and fixing our attention upon Cam Reddish. And I just want to say, that's kind of a petty move. But now, if you're going to say to him, but well, you have to take this from Nick's perspective as well. If you if you say to an assistant coach, when you're not a man enough to talk about your displeasure about the way your own head coach is using him, like using you, you go take it up with the head coach. I think that's fair. If you want... Okay, you just have to pick up some courage and go talk to the head coach. Don't be talking to one of his coaching, uh, one of his coaches. Don't pick someone random or someone's close to that you know on the coaches to have talked to him, especially in a negative way that portrays a bad picture on Tom Thibodeau. That that news is going to circulate, and it has. So if you're the next, and you're like, well, it's not our fault that. That you bite, that you stink. We give you 22 minutes. And you say, that's not a good enough role? Okay, fine. Fine. Because in 22 minutes, in the 20 games that he played, he only averaged 8 points, 45% for the field, 1 rebound, 1 assist. Those are very mediocre numbers. Those are severely mediocre numbers. 
And when you go back to his Atlanta Hawk days, yes, the former Atlanta Hawk, from the 2019 NBA draft all the way to now, right? Um, never is he healthy, and never is he going to rise up to be that player. Because in 2020, he played 28.8 minutes, only getting 11 points, shooting 36.5% from the field, 4 rebounds, and 1 assist. The last time he's got 4 rebounds, or heck, even 3 rebounds per game, was back in 2020. The last time he got one and a half assists per game was back in his rookie season. The last time that he actually had career high points, the last time he had double digits in scoring was in 2021. His but you gotta remember 2021, and he went to the Knicks in 2021. There was a trade, so in 49 games, and you tried to. Because he had 11.9 points. So, here we go. 12 points for the Hawks. And then, in 20, then with the Knicks in 2021, he also had 6 points. Uh, I, I can't really do math, but he's averaging 6 points a game. If you pretty much separate those two, right? He's pre That's pretty much what you can explain it as. That's how you can explain it. He's averaging 6 points a game. On his career, you're like, well, look at his career numbers. 10 points in 24 minutes, almost 40% from the field, three rebounds and one assist. That's not bad for a guy like him. Well, if you go season by season, you see the rapid decline, and you see that he's just not a fit for the Knicks. And then he's just talking trash on Tom Thibodeau, most likely. And then it got leaked out, and now it's like, oh, um... You don't like the rule? Okay. Stinks to be you. You're not getting any more minutes. You're benched. And that is hard discipline. And I can respect that from the New York Knicks. They're, he, they're giving them hard discipline. They're not going to take some mouthy loser of a basketball player. When they could easily trade him. When they could easily trade him last season. When, when negotiations did fall apart between the... Knicks and the Lakers. So I get it. I get it on face value that's like, how could Tom Thibodeau do that? Isn't Tom Thibodeau just being petty? Yes. But it's a hard discipline. So if you take it from the Knicks, they're like, this guy's not worth 22 minutes and it's a teaching moment. But the Cam Rush's side, it's like, oh, okay, you're disrespecting me that way, all because of a different opinion. And they're going to be petty about it. Because it could be saying it's disrespectful. Like, oh, I have a different opinion. I speak up how I feel. Then you just remove me completely from your game plan. Okay, that's how it is. But I'm just also going to say this. I'm going to throw a curveball in. I'm going to throw a curveball in. Something that neutrality can explain. They could also just be benching him because they're going to trade him. And if Cam Reyes' camp knows that he's going to be traded soon, then why risk him being injured? So I think there's some behind the scenes talking and rumors and reports coming out of there, right? I can 100% see that without question. But I find that very interesting. So I always say, when you're in an organization, when you're in a group, when you're someone with more than two people, words are going to travel faster than anything, than the speed of light. It just is. It, it, those small little smoke fires will turn to wildfires quickly. The smoke will turn to a fire, which will turn to a wildfire, and it'll kill you in a minute, in a quick split second. I'm not exaggerating, and Cam Reddish is living proof. Now, I've said, now, what was I saying here? Talk about Cam Reddish expected to be traded. I brought up the Lakers. So the Lakers are actually deep into the trade hunt of just trying to get new pieces, of trying to move on from old pieces, expiring contracts, and just guys, it's like, okay, we're ready to move on. Are you ready? It's this. The Lakers have been in contact with the Hornets as LA. Los Angeles, 
continues to try to move Patrick Beverly and Russell Westbrook. And I know there's been all these different forms of, well, okay, we can see how this works. Because I know the Lakers and Hornets talked last season in evolving a trade around Russell Westbrook. But now they're shopping Pat Bev and Russell Westbrook together. Or separately, but just trying to field offers. They're continuing to try to move Pat Bev and Westbrook. Right? They're staying in contact. Staying in contact with the Hornets. They have been. Because you gotta remember, they have talked about Gordon Hayward going to the Lakers. And moving off the expired contract. See? But I don't, I was, I don't know why the Hornets would do that. Now, the Hornets, to me, don't make a lot of sense, but I don't know why they would do that unless they're going to try to sign to an extension. Because if they really want him to, by all means. But there's also reports that they're trying to get rid of Scary Terry, too. So I don't know what they're going to be doing with Terry this year. But that was just from the rumors and reports of the Suns having interest in uh, Terry's year. So take that as you will. I just find it really funny that we can have all these different rumors, all these reports going on, that it can either be flipped on its head, or it could be dead accurate, or we could just have so much speculation, it's maddening. But right now, guys, I do believe the Lakers are going to look very long and hard for a Westbrook trade. They had it with the Rockets last season. For John Wall. But then that fell apart because the Lakers didn't feel like it was enough. Right? You remember that? It came in a few minutes after the deadline passed. And all of that came out. Everyone was questioning Rob Palenka. I just find it very, very, very interesting. In, in many ways, I find it captivating. Why? Because they've been, they've been doing this song and dance for forever. And the guys within the locker room have to understand, well, it's like, hey, is there going to be any bad blood here? Like, they know more what's going on, but it's like, okay, um, at any day now, these guys could be traded, or one of them could be traded, or something really good or bad could happen to any of these players, right? The only player that's safe on the Lakers is LeBron James because he's the active general manager of the team. Why would he trade himself? I would find it really funny, but I don't see an active general manager of a team doing that to himself. I couldn't see that. So that's where we're at. They've just stayed in contact with the Horns. Nothing has deeply progressed. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Westbrook's traded. I think Pat Bev could be traded. I wouldn't be surprised. And how many teams have Patrick Beverly been on? It seems like a lot. He was traded to a lot of teams. He's gone to a lot of teams. Because he's 34, he's up there. He's seen a lot. But, okay. Miami, Houston. So, hold on. One, two, three. He's been on five teams so far. Okay. So, very interesting. If I do so say if I do say so myself. Hmm. He's never really played a full season. The only time he's ever played close to 82 games was back in 2018 with 78. Besides that, his lowest amount was five games in 2010 with Miami. Then he took a season off because I guess no one wanted him. Then he went to Houston. He's been sticking around. I can respect that. Wow, he was with Houston for 2012 to 2014. 16. Never knew that. Well, hold on. No, I just don't remember him ever being a porn on the Rockets. I, I don't remember that. I remember on the Clippers. I remember on the Timberwolves. And, of course, the Lakers. But I don't remember him with the five games with Miami. I don't remember him with the Rockets. So, very interesting. Okay, I'm learning a little bit about our little guy over here. But then Russell Westbrook, how many teams has he been on? Uh, I I know we're all gonna say 
Hmm. I'm going to say Freaks. I know you got the Lakers, Oklahoma City, and Rockets. I don't think it was anyone else. Oh, Washington. For the one season he was with Washington. Oh, and Houston. Wait, hold on. Oh, yeah, but I already said Houston. Yeah, so from 2008 to 2018, he played with OKC. In 2019 was his short run of Houston, what people saw was going to be the greatest thing ever with him and James Harden, but that turned out to be a complete flop. But it was also like in the bubble. Then you had Washington in 2020, that quick run, then he went to the Lakers, been here since 2021. So very, very interesting. Yeah, I can see both of them getting traded. I just wanted to do some quick history on them. I would find it really funny if they actually traded Westbrook to the Rockets again. Just as a little joke, right? I would find that really funny. Put them on a really bad team. The worst team in the Lakers, I know that's hard, but there are teams out there. <laughs> Pistons. Or Hornets. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But yeah, so I say all of that to say the Lakers have been in contact with the Hornets as they continue to try to move Patrick Beverly and Russell Westbrook. And the last Laker news is my most favorite because Lee Crybaby cannot be crying over facts. Even though that's who he pretty much is. Like, when there's facts, he cries over it because he just has to believe his little inner circle and his little narrative. I'm not advocating you. But I just want to say this. And yes, did Jason Tatum foul LeBron James? Yes. But should LeBron James have thrown a tantrum like that? <laughs> no. But whatever. I'm not here to judge. Thou shalt not judge or whatever that saying is. Um, but I'm, okay, you know what I'm judging. So, because didn't he go like on a whole rant about, oh, this isn't fair. I watch basketball a lot. I watch all the time. I study teams. I, I go through all of that just to say, well, they're not treated the same way that we are. And he's right. They're not. I'm trying to see if there's a quote. Ooh, 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 okay, here we go. Here's his quote. A uh, quote, it's been building. You guys have seen some of the games we've lost this year with late game missed calls. We had an opportunity to win the game. I don't understand what we're doing. I watch basketball every single day. I watch these games every single day, and I don't see it happening to nobody else. It's just weird. End quote. Or, or, or maybe it's because you've been protected your whole life. And so the one time that a good call is being made or just a bad call is being made against you. You have to go on this little hissy fit. And it shocks you. And it makes you very depressed because you never had to really deal with it. Just saying. But I'm just going to say this real quick. And you guys, take this as you will. The Lakers rank second. In receiving the most favorable last game calls during the 22-23 season. The NFL deemed its officials had missed a total of 34 calls or no calls in those games. And 21 of them, 61.8%, had favored the Lakers. Wow, so weird that the NBA is rigging these games against you. Wow, so weird that you're only able to have only able to make minimal mistakes before you go irate or start throwing a hissy fit, a tantrum. Okay? I just find that really funny because it's really stupid. Because you see Patrick Beverly out there bringing out a camera. He's trying to make himself relevant. You see LeBron James throwing himself on the ground, needing his little bottle and a blanket. You see all these guys saying, it's systemic, it's us against the world, it's just not fair. Um, you guys are most favored. You're second in receiving most favorable last game calls. So don't tell me it's added frustration because of last second non-whistles. 
This only happened 13 times. 61.8% had been favored in the Lakers way. But no, no, let's just keep crying. Let's just keep crying. I forgot how sensitive the Lakers are. I forgot how sensitive LeBron James is. I forgot how sensitive uh, dress wearing Russell Westbrook is. I'm just saying. These guys gotta get, gotta get a grip. Like, if you're gonna start running your mouth, at least getting the facts right. I hate the Lakers. They're not mentally tough on anything. I've never seen LeBron James in his entire career throw a hissy fit because one call doesn't go his way, but 61.8% and majority of the calls go his way. But I swear, one call, okay. Or else make a mistake. I don't think it's something you have to murder these guys for. But I don't know. Maybe it's just maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me. I'm not going to say that I'm wrong, but uh, I'm just saying I'm never wrong. So I'm trying to pull this up. Don't worry, don't worry. Um, where were the rep? What was the rest response to this? I'm trying to find it because I found it very hilarious. I thought this was satire until I found out that this was just legit news that was very depressing. So where is it? I'm scrolling from my feed right now on my Twitter feed. I know I made a comment about it. Did, so you think? Okay, let me just go to NBA officials. NBA of. Official. Uh, yeah, it's great. I just want officials. Like, you know, referees. Okay, hold on. Oh, can we just... Can we look through this? Um... Oh, yeah, here we go. Um, from at official NBA refs, quote, Like everyone else, referees make mistakes. We've made one to end of last night's game, referring to the Celtics-Lakers game. And that is gut-wrenching for us. This play will weigh heavily and cause sleepless nights as we strive to be the best referees we can. I wish y'all could see my facial expense right now. What do you mean, sleepless nights? Like, what do you mean? Weighing heavily, okay, fine, because it's your job and you made a mistake. But to say you're not going to be able to get any sleep because of that? Really? Are you just, like, trying to care to LeBron James a little too much? It's just weird. Like, who says because of one... Okay, for all the mistakes that I've made, never once have I said, I'm going to lose sleep. I'm going to have sleepless nights. And this is going to weigh so heavily on me that I'm going to break down and cry and I'm going to have to keep correct. Like, really? It's one thing to correct a mistake, but it's another to say I'm going to have sleepless nights. It's not like this happened in the NBA Finals. This happened in a regular season game that was televised nationally. It wasn't like the Lakers were going to win anyways. So I, I thought that response was just kind of, just kind of off. I I honestly don't know how to respond to that. It's just super creepy. It's just it's, it's just creepy. Hold on. I'm just, I'm just, hold on. I'm trying to find my tweet because I asked a very perfectly logical and very, very realistic question. I just want to see official. I just want to see the official. I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to see. Um, You know what? I may not be able to find it, but at this point, 
is it even is like even worth it? Hold on. I'm going to I'm going to trouble more saying uh breath. Don't worry guys, I got this. Like latest. Latest. You know what? I give up. I can't find it. But I wish I could because I, I was just asking some question. I'm like, well, why is people losing sleepless nights? I'm like, laugh out loud. Why, 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 why are people losing sleepless nights? Like, who says that? Nobody. Nobody in their right mind actually thinks that way. Yeah, maybe, maybe I deleted a tweet or something. I, I, I honestly don't know. I'm still searching for it. Because I, I want to know what I said. Here we go. Wow, this happened on the 29th and we're still talking about this? Okay. Yeah, I said, I said these people are weird. I said, laugh out loud. Who is causing sleepless... I said, oh, I'm sorry. Laugh out loud. Who is this causing sleepless nights for? With the laughing emoji. These people are weird. Dot, dot, dot. That's just so weird. It's just so weird. Like... I just, it's also very weird to me that, that you guys actually placated the one player, no matter the status, and made an apology letter to him? That's just weird. LeBron's weird, they're weird, the entire NBA is probably weird. I just don't get that. And maybe, since the Lakers are my team, I can't really get that. But even when the Suns had bad calls and it cost them games, like the Jeremy Grant game winner where he legit traveled and took many steps and then putting up that shot where it should have been called a travel, and they deemed it in the L2M report. That was a travel. No apology was issued, but because LeBron James has a massive following and he's such a crybaby and everything needs to be uh given on a silver spoon to him they had to do that apology and it's pathetic but you didn't see Suns fans writing sure in the moment but no one was writing articles about it no one was tweet like the Devin Booker did not come out and tweet anything he kept himself Especially not days after. And he didn't say, Well, that's not fair. I watch tons of footage. I say, I see tons of game. I'm a student of the game. And, but it's just not fair. They're, they're against us. Like, get, get a grip. Like, like really? I, I just don't get it. But I guess I'm never going to understand. Because I, 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 I can't get into the brain of someone like LeBron James. I can't. Anyways, speaking about the Phoenix Suns, I'm going to move on. And this has not been a pretty, this is not a great week for Dwayne Washington Jr. Saving Lane, sure. Uh, Dwayne Washington Jr., no. So the Phoenix Suns have agreed to sign Saban Lee to a two way deal. The Suns will be waiving Dwayne Washington Jr. So they did not want to wait. They did not want to take the chance on him. In fact, they wanted to sign him so no one else could sign him. He's been incredible throughout the 10 days, uh, 20 days that he was with the team and the many games he spent, and now he's there for the remainder of the season. Dwayne Washington Jr., thank you for being a part of the Phoenix Suns. You gave me many stressful nights, many angry nights, and many happy nights, and you're now waived. Anyways, um, Devin Booker, the more important news. Devin Booker could be returning from his left groin strain as soon as Tuesday against the Brooklyn Nets. Booker has been ramping up his encore work and is expected to join the Suns at the start of the five-game road trip. So if I am you guys, and I know I am, I am already excited. I'll be jumping up and down on my couch. We have missed 
21, 20, 21 in games without Devin Booker. Past five weeks without Devin Booker. It's been miserable without Devin Booker. We've rebounded without Devin Booker, but I can't wait to have Devin Booker back. Oh, buddy, I'm excited. I ain't legit excited. Chris Paul's on a tear. Sam McHale, Sam DA. Same with Cam, who's trying to get himself back into it. The Lee brothers are into it. The book's going to be back. I am excited. I'm really excited. I'm still going to have to wait till after trade on, but it's as soon as Tuesday. So I can't wait for that, guys. And that will be on the 7th. We just need to get through five more days. Five more days. So I am super, super pumped about that. The news came out yesterday. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that. That's some great news. This roster, this locker room, they'll have more, more morality. And this team as a whole will be looking different and much, much better. And guys, with that being said, that's all I got for today's podcast episode. A very short episode, but only six things to talk about that were major, that were important, and that were up to date, that were actually something to talk about, not just like a day or two old. So guys, with that being said, that's all I got. I will be having those um, John Collin mock trades coming out for Tomorrow morning's podcast episode, y'all know where to do, y'all know where to find me, and guys, with that being said, I'm signing off, and I hope you have a great day, and I will catch y'all tomorrow, 8 a.m., YouTube, all the podcast hosting platforms, and now, I'm signing off, peace out.